So welcome, thank you very, very much. So we are here having a discussion with some people here from Attleborough High School. Hello guys. Hi. Hi. So um, we have here um, Millie, can you give us a wave Millie? And Eloise and Miss Billin. Um, Millie and Eloise, what year group are you in? Uh, 10. You're 10, so you're doing what, what we call in the UK uh, your GCSEs? Yes. Yep, awesome. Good luck with those. Um, so for those people who aren't aware, um, Attleborough High School is a, is a high school, a co-educational co state school in the east of England, um, here in the United Kingdom. And we're here to talk about the uh, C3S Education Demonstrator, which, which we launched in November, that WEMC launched in November. And we want to get a teacher's and a student's point of view, but not just about the tool itself, but a kind of about climate and energy stuff in general. So to get your points of view and whatnot. So... So thank you. The first question I really wanted to ask you was, from your perspective, um, both as teachers and students, what do you think is the most important aspects of to learn about climate or to learn about energy in, in your opinion? So we start with Miss Billing first. Okay. Uh, so um, in terms of energy and climate, I think it, for, for me, it's really understanding the impacts that our actions as humans have on the natural environment. And I think it's really important for students to identify fact from fiction. There's a lot of um, uh, false media out there. And I think it's really important that our students are given the ability to critically evaluate the information that they're given and um, be able to see the science behind the changes that are going on in our global society. And I think that um, it's also important that students know that climate change isn't affecting all of us equally around the world as well and understanding that some of us like here in the UK have got more of a capability to adapt to changes than those in uh, LIC countries and I think that's really important that we see ourselves as a global community and not just thinking for ourselves yeah we can uh, support ourselves in that but actually we need to be supporting LICs as well. Awesome. Yeah. So um, how, what do you think about that, um, Millie and Eloise? Do you kind of, what aspects do you, what about from a student's point of view, which parts do you feel that Miss Billing has said that you really identify with in terms of climate energy? What would you want to know as students? Yeah, I definitely agree with the idea of like knowing as humans what we're doing that's impacting our climate and also some of the more like natural causes and what's really changing over the time that sort of affecting yeah i agree i said like we should learn more about how to prevent taking actions that like we think is not doing anything to our planet but in reality it like all adds up to global warming like if after school children buy like a product with single use packaging like that might be one small piece but if everyone like stops doing that then it could like make a change yeah, I found it really interesting, actually, what you we said about the, the fake news and the data. Um, you know, it's, it's quite rife at the moment, you know, misinformation and trying to use fact information, of course. And one thing we hope that the tool does is to provide the opportunity for you to explore the data yourself and, and, and see it. And, and, and also the other thing that you said as well, uh, Miss Benning, was regarding to how the changes in the climate and the energy systems are not even across the world. And another thing that that you can do by comparing graphs and the map to see how those changes are going to be different from one place in Europe in particular to another place in Europe. So it's really, really uh, interesting you said that. Um, a question I've got for the students actually here is um, how inspired or how, how much um, hope or inspiration have you taken from youth figures like Greta Thunberg? Um, do you follow Greta quite closely? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I see her posts on Instagram. Like she's travelled travels around the world doing eco-friendly things. I think that's quite inspiring to young people to try and like take off with her. Yeah, same. I see her on the news sometimes as well. And I just sort of think, you know, I should probably start doing some of the things that she does and improving my ways of helping the environment. Awesome. Because I've, I've definitely seen myself, you know, youth empowerment quite a fair bit. And I think having the tools behind you to support that would be fantastic and and in in um, in what ways do you feel that the tools like the education demonstrator can help you with to spread that message um it, well it helps us to identify what is what are the problems and it's it's something that's interactive so it's easy for people to understand and easy for people to work with so people are going to want want to use it and want to find out more about it I think if you give students statistics, they might walk away and not remember it. But if you give them an image, they can like visualise and remember them more. Because it's more engaging for them to look at and figure out. 
Yeah, so this is mostly, I mean, a question for all of you, but mostly for Ms. Ms. Byrne is that, do you feel that the conversation taking place and, you know, the rise of people like Greta Thunberg has changed the conversation a bit, has increased the demand for, for tools that you can explore the changes in climate? Yeah, I definitely feel the awareness of global issues relating to climate and, um, and it goes wider than that, it's like plastic and things. Uh, definitely a lot more in my 10 years of teaching just just feel that students are wanting that information and they want to know I'm hearing all these headlines well where's the actual evidence to back that up and it, uh, it's really nice to hear like girls are following people like Greta on Instagram and, and you know it's nice to see that that social media platform is being used for awareness and not just for selfies <laughs> you know so it's, it's really nice to have that um, uh, that's accessible to the to students and using tools like the um, uh, GIS tool is just like the uh, completely agree with what the girls are saying. It just gives that visual impact. You know, like you cannot hide the fact that those temperatures are clearly rising um, for other historical data and all those predictive models as well. Um, I just feel like that just is there it's plain simple to understand yeah and you mentioned you mentioned GIS so so for people who are not aware who are watching this uh, GIS stands for geographical information systems and and actually they're more common and people know about these more than they're not so so in a nutshell these are um, basically interactive maps uh, that you can click on and explore some data so actually with, with that in mind um, so for I, I know um, Millie and, Lou and Eloise through Miss Billing and other subjects, you, you've done a lot of GIS, particularly in geography. So um, a question for you is, what do you think about the, the education demonstrator? Does it, does it match a GIS? Is it when you look at it and you think, oh yeah, that's a GIS? And, and in what ways do you think it is a GIS? Yeah, I think it's got lots of useful features, like the shading of the countries, like depending on uh, the numbers. And it's quite useful how you can see the statistics for each individual year, instead of like a wider time span of 10 years is helpful to do research as well and like if there are any events that affected our climate more than others. Yeah we can we can use it to help us back up answers and use as evidence and um, things for answers in exams and questions so that's always useful. And I like the fact that you've got different layers of information that you can can show so you've got the te you don't just have temperature but you've got uh, energy use changes and uh, potential for uh, solar panel photovoltaics etc so there's lots of different information that you can um, switch between and able to make some comparisons to which is useful yeah and it's and actually it's very interesting what you say because um, when I was teaching one thing I really really invested a lot in was was inquiry based learning and I know that um, modern syllabuses now both national syllabus and syllabuses such as the international geography baccalaureate um do a lot of inquiry-based learning um so so the ability to to kind of compare maps and and compare the data and actually answer a question using the data is very 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 powerful um, yeah currently thinking about doing a decision making exercise lesson with um the year 10 students using the um, edu demo as well um, and just seeing you know posing that question to them and and then having a decision that students have to make and it won't matter which kind of side that they come on so long as they can justify it and find that information it'd be interesting to see um, what they can get out of it really okay so with the toy specifically what what kind of things can you name certain specific things about it that you really enjoy the most or you really, really find useful? Um, so Millie, what do you think? Well, it's, it's like Eloise already said, I really like the timeline because a lot of graphs you find on the internet are like, say, 2010 to 2020. And it's, it's harder to see the actual change because you've got a wider span of sort of like statistics. Where there's, when you can see each individual year, it helps us understand more you know, the years that are lower or higher or we're doing worse in or better in, and it's just a lot a lot better for our research. But yeah, like I said before, I think the colours are good because um, you can, like, visualise instead of having to re read the facts, you can easily tell, like, what countries are better and worse. And for, for me as a teacher, getting the students to 
uh, engage with geographical information and improve their essentially numeracy skills as well, being able to extrapolate data, being able to see a range of um, accuracy as well. So it's one of the layers that you can add on um, using the tool um, to see that actually there is some uncertainty in some of the values and that there is a quite a bit of overlap between even the highest and the lowest predictions that climate models are forecasting. So being able to kind of explore those in something a bit more engaging where they can um, control that media interface as well, which is really useful rather than just seeing a static graph there. It's obviously moving and evolving over time. Okay, awesome. And we, as, as I've mentioned before, we, we know that the, the tool is still in development. Um, and there are improvements being made all the time. So, so the question is, is that we know it's not, not perfect at the moment. It will never be perfect because we want to improve it the whole time. Um, so wh what do you think is kind of like, if you were to have a wish list or, or, or if there was a particular, particular annoyance about it that you would change? So what kind of improvements do you think we could make to it? Um, I said it'd be good to see the difference in air temperature and like electricity demand, et cetera, in major cities as well as the countries, because often it's the cities that are producing the most CO2 as well as like the rural areas. Yeah, and um, maybe some statistics to do with waste as well, like in different cities or in, um, in around perhaps the coastlines or somewhere like that. And I said um, quite be quite useful at the moment the the timeline is that you click through kind of timeline so maybe like a play button where you can play and pause so it automatically runs the animation as it was i know it's not an animation but it just shows it so you can just play it and just watch it as um as it's going through just to show those gradual changes it'll be quite useful as well okay awesome well Thank you very, very much for your time this morning. Um, I, know you're, I know you're eager to get back to class and you're <laughs> eager to get back to planning preparation assessment. But, uh, Absolutely. <laughs> but um, yeah, thank you very much for joining us and, um, and for your time. Thank you. Thank you.